Property taxes have skyrocketed in the Savannah area in the last year. Home prices have increased significantly, which is great news, but that also drives up property taxes. And this affects everyone, renters and homeowners and landlords. So is there anything that you can do to keep your property taxes low? Well, there is something, and we're gonna go over exactly how you can do that today. Here is the concept in a nutshell. We're going to look at houses that have recently sold in your immediate area that are directly comparable to your property. We're going to gather data for what those homes sold for, make adjustments for size, age, lot size, bedroom and bathroom count, come up with an adjusted value for each comparable property, and then go to our local tax assessor and dispute the assessed value. Make sense? Of course it doesn't, because you're not a realtor, and that's why we are here to help you. This probably sounds like I'm speaking another language, and that's totally fine. I'm gonna make this as simple as possible. So here I am on my website, and I'm gonna give you a link later in the video to show you exactly where you can access this information. Just FYI, my team currently covers Savannah, Augusta, Atlanta, so you would be able to do this on my website for any of those specific metro areas. If you live in an area that we do not yet currently service, feel free to leave a comment down below. Tell me where you live. I'd be happy to point you in the right direction. We are going to search for comparable properties. These are properties that are as similar to you and as close in geographic proximity as possible. Step number one is to find the comps. We're going to look for properties that are within about a quarter mile radius of your home. Now, sometimes this is easier said than done, especially if homes have not been selling around you very often. We're gonna end up with a lack of comps. And due to the lack of sold homes in the past two years, this is a very real possibility. In an ideal world, we're gonna start at a quarter mile radius. So here is how we would get started. I would look for properties in a quarter mile radius around your house. So here I am on the website, I go to the address, I am using as the subject property, your property, and I'm gonna draw a radius around the house of about a quarter mile, if at all possible. Now let's see how many sold homes within the last 90 days pop up when I do this. If we don't come up with enough homes, we're going to expand our radius to about half a mile. Now, if you're in a city like Savannah or Atlanta, you're gonna to wanna to keep it at a quarter mile radius, which shouldn't be too hard because obviously the houses are much closer together. In the suburbs, half a mile is pretty standard, although it's always better to get homes that are as close to you geographically as possible because sometimes they're across the main road, it's in a completely different subdivision, and even though they are physically close to each other, they were built at different times, different builders, different styles, different lot sizes, there's just a lot of variables. And if your property is in a rural area, you may need to go a mile, two miles, even three miles out to find enough comparable properties. But just remember that the physically closer you can get to your home, the more accurate the values will be and the less adjusting you're going to need to do later. Next, we're gonna be looking at properties that are similar to yours in age and size. By size, I mean livable square footage, above ground finished square footage. We call this GLA, gross living area. And what I mean is finished living space. So it has to have walls, has to have heat. If there's air conditioning in the rest of the house, it's gonna have air conditioning as well. It's not an unfinished basement if you happen to have one. It's not a screened porch. It's not a room in your attic that has no drywall that you're just using as living space. I usually look for properties that are within about 200 square feet plus or minus of the subject property. So if your house is 2,400 square feet, I would start by looking at homes that are between 2,200 and 2,600 square feet. Again, if not enough properties pop up when you do this search, you're gonna expand your search criteria. So let's go to 300 square feet or maybe 400 square feet. But you don't wanna choose a house that's 1,200 square feet when yours is 2,600 square feet, even if it's right next door and was built two years before yours. It really is not all that similar to yours because it's literally half the size. Next, we're gonna start looking for the number of bedrooms and bathrooms, the age of the house, and the size of the lot. 
Now, luckily, when you do the search on my website, you're going to see all of the photos of the house. So you'll be able to look inside and see how it compares to yours. Is it completely original and it has no upgrades? You might consider this to be inferior condition. Did they upgrade everything from top to bottom and you haven't done quite as much? Then we would consider it superior condition. See if you can get at least five comps that are similar to yours, and then look at the prices that they sold for. You're gonna have a range of prices, probably an outlier on the low end and an outlier on the high end and a few in between. Your job is to then figure out what your home's value is right now as indicated by the values of the other properties. I do not usually advocate using price per square foot. As I detailed in an earlier video, you can check that out later. I feel like it's the lazy way to come up with a value and completely inaccurate. And I do not do that for my clients at all. But for the average consumer who does not have a real estate license or an appraiser's license and doesn't know how to do a CMA, this will at least give you some sort of ballpark pricing. You'll take the sold price divided by the square footage to come up with a price per square foot. Then you'll figure out how many square feet your home has and multiply it by the price per square foot to give you a very, very, very ballpark price. Now that you have the general market value for your home, what is the tax assessor saying your home is worth? Here's where it gets tricky. If it's lower than this market value, well, you're not gonna be able to lower your property taxes, most likely. Because when you tell them that your house is actually worth more than they're assessing it for, they're not gonna give you a price break. And I'm not sure that I really wanna bring it to their attention and give them a reason to raise my property taxes next year. But if your assessed value is significantly higher than the number you came up with, by all means, contact the tax assessor's office and ask them how to dispute your property taxes. They'll have a form for you to fill out, they're going to ask you to provide those comps, and they're going to have a deadline each year, so you'll need to do it before the deadline has passed. And then once you turn in all of your supporting documentation as far as the comps that you used and why, if you need further assistance, just contact us and we'd be happy to help you. So here is the link down below to be able to search for comps on your own. And as you can see, this is a very user-friendly search. It will give you complete access to our local MLS data. But if you're wondering if it's a good time to just sell your property now while the values are so high, I'll put a link down below for that where you can speak to one of us and find out exactly what we think your home is worth in today's market.